So from my experience, um, I didn't say that I actually went to the University of Florida and swam and spent a few years out there. Um, and as probably as a lot of us know, the Americans thrive on sport. Uh, they seem to get a lot of things right. Um, and they just have this sort of you know, atmosphere where they believe they're the best and they love what they're doing. They work hard and they're really positive and believe they're number one. Um, and anything that isn't that doesn't seem right. Um, so it's definitely something to learn from the Americans in sport, um, that they just have that, we're having fun, we're the best, we're going to do this, everything's great. Um, and that's something that you should be practicing every day. I believe. Um, I was a sort of preparation athlete, so I was always, always, always looking for ways to get that extra, you know, 1% out of my performance. So I did look into uh, sports psychology and mental health, and uh, I didn't have a clue as a swimmer. I didn't understand it at all. I, I was very lucky, uh, I guess, to have some good coaching and good mentoring. So when I did struggle with my mental health i had that conversation with uh, my coach and and the people around me and i think that that really really helped me but i, I would say probably less <clears throat> less than 10 percent of what i did um it was going on around me and, and a, a weird story one of my one of the guys that beat me in some in my beat my british record in uh, the 200 freestyle he was actually having a sports psychologist at the time and I remember looking at it and thinking, well, wow, like I can't do anything more physically. I can't do anything more in the land training, in the gym, in the pool. You know, how has he gone and, and, and beaten my record? Is it, I remember asking myself, is it that, that he's mentally tougher than me? And is he, is he able to tap into things that I wasn't able to when I went into those scenarios of, of self-doubt, when I got myself down? So, yeah, it was really, uh, it was, it was, not a lot that I did. Uh, most ex-athletes that you, you're going to speak to and that I speak to, some of my peers always look back and think, wow, I wish I'd have done a little bit more on, um, on, the, on the mental side and trying to get myself a little bit more prepared for different scenarios. I mean, physically, everyone that lines up, all eight people at the international competitions, physically, they're pretty similar nowadays. Um, but I think the thing that really separates uh, the, the the guys and the girls that go really far is the is the mental resilience and being able to tap into that that resource. A bit about myself personally. So I've always been obsessed with sport, and I use that word very deliberately. I obsessed with sport. So I've played so many different sports growing up. And for me, it was always the, the psychological side that let me down. So I had a, a negative experience with a coach when I was playing academy football uh, when I was younger. Really horrible coach that actually put me off playing football. It made me made me leave that setup as I was looking to try and pursue a professional career. And that experience I had with a coach didn't just make me leave, you know, that setup. But I actually stopped playing almost altogether. And for me, I think that was that was really difficult. And look, I've I've met people who've had way worse experiences, but I think it's really sad when you're so passionate about something and you love it, but someone else is ruining that for you. So I had a really negative experience with a coach and then also with my golf as well. So again, the football career packed in and I, I was trying to pursue a career in golf so looking at a u.s scholarship and looking to to hopefully become a, a tour golfer but it was always the psychological side that let me down so it wasn't so much a negative experience there but it was anxiety in competitions it was becoming really nervous and you know when it really mattered ultimately i i couldn't perform and no matter how much technical coaching i had no matter how much i worked on my fitness or other areas around it i still couldn't perform when it matters you know, I would like to say 100% physical and zero mental, um, especially in the beginning of a uh, swimming career, sporting career. Um, and then it might slightly change, 95% physical, 5% uh, mental, which, um, which when I've thought about it is crazy because you always hear on competition day, it's 90% mental, 10% physical, 
Um, but hang on a minute, we train 100% mental, I mean physical, 100% physical and what, well, 0% mental. So, yeah, it's a bit crazy. You know, as a, as a young swimmer, that when I stopped doing PBs, that was like a real challenge for me. I, I couldn't believe it. And I, and I remember it absolutely clear as uh, we went to a sort of regional competition and I swam a couple of races and I was one second, two second off my PBs and I didn't understand what was going on, you know? And all the things in my mind were like, I'm going backwards, I'm not good enough, um, I'm gonna quit, right? You know, this is gonna be my last competition ever. Um, and what I did then is sat down with my coach and said, you know, what's happening? And they explained to me all the things, you know, you're physically changing, um, you know, you, your, your training has changed and, and all these sort of things. And once I started to understand it a little bit more, it really, really helped me with my, with my sort of coming through that period. I think that's such a hard period as, as any swimmer will go through it. It's called a sort of plateau period. Every swimmer goes through it, no matter what sort of level you are, even whether you're county or just below county level, or you're moving up to regional and national or international, every swimmer will go through those, those periods. And it's having those kind of coping mechanisms are really important.